Welcome one more time to the Rock Solid Faith Devotional Series where we are simply encouraging one another to place our hands in the hand of the Master. Those of you who are following us, you are aware that lately we are in the book of Exodus and we will stay there for this evening as well. Exodus chapter 1, I am reading from verse 7 through to 12. Exodus chapter 1, verse 7 through to 12. Um, and the Bible says, But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. So come, let's deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. 
and so go up out of the land. Therefore, verse 11 says, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh supply cities, uh, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew stronger. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. And so the Egyptians made the children of Israel, I'm, I'm reading 13, serve with vigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them serve was with rigor. I'm going to discuss a topic under the, I mean, a subject under the topic, when the Goshen days are over. When the Goshen days are over. Because a time comes when Goshen days are simply over. Let's pray together. Our kind and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the moment we have again to reflect on your word. I pray that what we share here will be hidden in our hearts to strengthen us and save us a light unto our feet, even as we live in these end times. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. When Goshen days are over, let me take you back to Genesis chapter 47. Genesis chapter 47, and I am reading verse 5 and 6. And the Bible says, Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know any competent men among them, uh, then make them chief headsmen over my livestock. So there you have it. When they finally came in this the land of Egypt, and their own is in power, second only to the king of Egypt, they are a favored people. In fact, Joseph is simply told, look, your family is here. And you are in power. Egypt is before you. That's the meaning. You can do what you want for them. So get to the best land and give it to them. And they will be in the land of Goshen. So if you please, Goshen is a favored land. When they are in Goshen, they are a favored people. It is a, a place where security is guarantees, guaranteed and, and some level of success guaranteed. They are secure. They are favored. Goshen, if you please, is a happy land. Goshen is a place of prosperity. They are the special people of God. They are in Goshen. They are told, choose the best of land in Egypt, and they will settle in Goshen. But obviously, looking at what we have read, looking at what we have read, in Exodus chapter 1, 7 through to 14, those days of easy, those days of comfort, those favored uh, uh, moments when they are a special people, those days came to an end because somehow a pharaoh who did not have regard for Joseph came to power. So my friends, there are times when the Goshen days will actually run out. It's perhaps you will lose your job. It's perhaps those who cared for you will no longer be there. Whatever may complicate your time and your life can actually arise unexpectedly. And that is what we saw the other week. When the Goshen days are over, what is happening to them when those days are over? 
what is happening to them when those days are over? Well, the Pharaoh who knew no Joseph made up his mind to afflict them, to make their lives harder. But I want you to take note of something. I want you to take note of something. Number one, number one, these people that he is playing with, these people that he is missing are actually called the sons of Israel. Uh, look at verse 1 of chapter 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel who came to Egypt. That is their, that is their title. Let's come to verse, uh, verse, what? verse 7. Verse 7. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied. Okay? Let's come to verse uh, 9. Let's come to verse 9. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we are. If you read the Bible from Genesis to where we are, this is the very first time you are seeing these people, the sons of Jacob, being called the children of Israel. And that term is used in the context of them multiplying. Secondly, the term is used in the context of them being oppressed and afflicted. There is a reason probably why they are called the children of Israel the first time here in this context and for you to appreciate for you to appreciate go back with me to genesis chapter 32 i think yes genesis chapter 32 and we are beginning to read on verse 24 on verse 24 then jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Verse 28, and he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him. So, in his life as the father of God's chosen nation, this man came to a point through prayer and the struggle with God when he gains a new name. And that new name is Israel. That new name means overcomer. One who is triumphant. At this point, the father of God's chosen nation gains the proper name and a designation for God's chosen people. They will be called Israel. So somehow, somehow, Pharaoh is making a mistake. He does not know the kind of people he is actually tempering with. These are overcomers. We are given this title just before they get into conflict, before they get in the hand of this, uh, this, this messless pharaoh. So that we are reminded that he is dealing with people who are actually born to overcome. They are born to triumph. They are overcomers. Therefore, we are being prepared to know why they will get out stronger even after all the afflictions. Because they are. They are overcomers. And that's why the Bible tells us. That's why the Bible tells us on verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. 
and they were and 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 and, and, they, and Egypt became very jittery and they were afraid because they are dealing with a people they cannot contain and they are dealing with a people whose population they are not able to limit they are dealing with overcomers they are dealing with overcomers instead of breaking them that which was meant to break them became uh, help them to become better instead of them becoming bitter they actually become better they overcame the odds they were resilient because they are because they are overcomers he made a mistake he never had an idea what kind of people he was dealing with what we find is in this passage is that affliction and persecution could not thwart the purpose of god affliction instead actually advanced the purpose of god they became better they became stronger and they multiplied i heard somebody say at one point that there are times when you must protect your crops there are times when they must be shielded from a harsh cold weather and you plant them in what we call greenhouses or shall i say hot houses so they can germinate so that they can grow and be uprooted and planted where you want them to grow at one point they lived in goshen but god is fashioning a nation god is preparing and building a people so there was a time when the easy life of goshen the the, the 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 moment of prosperity had to come to an end and god turned egypt into a hot house for the tree of his planting so that when they are nurtured when they are pruned finally he can plant them in the promised land and they will be a better people i want to say at one point goshen days came to an end and egypt became a furnace for god in fact god himself calls it a furnace uh, deuteronomy chapter 4 i think in verse 20 egypt was a furnace where 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 there are jealousies you know where there are bitterness where there are anger against one another where the tribal rivalries had to be melted and dissolved so they could be one great nation people who love one another the days of easy came to an end egypt became a hot house egypt became a furnace that god was able to use the people who were at the, the throat of each other people who you know people who grew up in polygamy people who grew up in polygamy suspicious of one another but finally when they are afflicted they realize we are one they bonded and became one great nation somebody told me that mutual need has a way to bring people together in fact mutual needs beget solidarity we become each other's keeper that is why you know sometimes it saddens me uh, in our days where a nation can be facing a disaster instead of people coming together praise together and become each other's keeper we begin to exploit a disaster the misfortune of, of other people right now in our country we are experiencing a drought but some we have not known in their lives crops failing and this is not a time for you know if if somehow the lord will bless you and you have a bad harvest this is not a time for a businessman to make a fortune at the misfortune of other people in my village uh, where i come from there is a saying in tonga that says yalumwa yayanzana in other words when we are facing a similar danger we learn how to become each other's keeper and so we are appealing to those of you who are businessmen to those of you who are poised to have a better harvest than other people please remember that for some families this drought is going to affect them negatively more than other people to exploit a disaster is not fair 
at a time when we are facing a common enemy, it's good to band together and be each other's keeper. I'm appealing to those of you who are in politics. This is no time to gain a mileage out of a disaster. It is a time to come together as a people. When we band together, when we make up our mind, we are going to be each other's keeper, we will overcome. Affliction was not able to break these people. They came out stronger. They banded together. They grew into one great nation. I pray that we are going to learn a lesson. But you know what? There is another reason that I told you already why these people, why these people were unbeatable. They were indestructible because they carried a special name. They were Israelite. They were overcomers. They were indestructible. Well, I have come here this evening to tell us that those who are God's children, they also carry a name that is special. We are Christians. We are followers of Jesus. And through that name, we are more than overcomers. The psalmist wrote and said, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and the earth. Psalm 124 and verse 8. He goes on to say, because he has known my name, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. 91 and verse 14 to 15. I found trouble and sorrow then called upon the name of the Lord. I was brought low and he helped me. Psalm 116, 3 to 6. The name of the Lord. We are called by that might name. Isaiah. Isaiah tells me. Isaiah tells me that God keeps closer to him those who trust in his name. He tells us in chapter 50 and verse 10. Who is among you that fears the Lord, that obeys the voice of his servant, that walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. We carry a name as well, my friends. We are known by the name of God. We are God's children. We are more than Israelites. We are born to triumph. So I have come this evening to say, when the Goshen days are over and you find yourself in affliction, wait upon the Lord. It may simply be a hot house. It may simply be a furnace where the dross must be burnt and pure gold comes out. If you find that the Goshen days are over, you still have a God to trust and lean on him in tough times because apparently it is clear from this passage that even the worst of times can make us better people. And that is what we call rock solid faith. Child of God, trust in God is our prayer this evening. Let's pray together. Our kind and gracious dear loving heavenly father. Thank you for the lessons of old. But show us how you have come through on behalf of those who put their trust in the name of the Lord. I ask that in cloud days and in sunshine, when we are up on the mountain and down in the valley, teach us to trust in the Lord. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nagusala Jesus sunukambo ina lego lele dego temaulwa. I choose you, jilenga zuo, mami mutala bala. Wagalenga julu aniga, aitu yonse ya muniga. We glorify your name, kambo wele dego temaulwa. Nagusala Jesus sunukambo ina lego lele dego temaulwa. I choose you, jilenga zuo, mami mutala bala. Wagalenga julu aniga, aitu yonse ya muniga. 
We glorify your name kambo wele de kutemba ulwa Tutaleti manyungwe muniga amisho wonjo tuganana Tutaleti lupyo piongano amila ganjo tujisi Bamu imba lozi, bamu imba bemba, bamu imba tonga Tutaloni babwesu kambo tuwa mbaleza umwe Tutaleti manyungwe muniga amisho wonjo tuganana Tutaleti Kambo tushoma muliniwe Twagulomba muami wesu tutumine muya usalala Unite us Lord Kambo tuanse tulibago Tuswangane mulu yando Twagulomba umami We call on you Kambo tushoma muliniwe Tutaleti manyungwe muniga Amisho mojo tuganana Tutaleti lupyo piongano Amila ganjo tujisi Bamu imba lozi, bamu imba bemba Bamu imba tonga Tutaloni bagwesu Kambo tuwa mbaleza umwe Tutaleti manyungwe mbuniga Anisho wajo tuganana Tutaleti lupyo piongano Amila ganjo tujisi Bamu imba lozi, bamu imba bemba Bamu imba tonga Tutawani babwesu, kambo tuwa mbaleza umwe Tutaleti manyungwe muniga, amisho wanjo tuganana Tutaleti lupyo piongano, amila ganjo tujisi Bamu imba lozi, bamu imba lembe, bamu imba tonga Tutawani babwesu, kambo tuwa mbaleza Nefuluka kumwesu Nomba ndimu pepi Nobulendo wapalama Fuluko kuya kwe Kafika, kafika, kwezwe su, kamu pala mina tata, akati la mwabome. Come. 
Tila 